Hi, everybody. Um, hopefully, all can hear me. Um, it's truly exciting to be here. I see that we're starting to have some participants and uh, some attendees, I should say, trickle in. So I uh, wanted to give a big welcome to everyone and thank you to all for joining this uh, discussion, this important discussion we're going to have today. What does belonging look like for Gen Z? Um, I think this is such an important topic. Uh, as human beings, so many of us are in this constant search for community connection and a space where we really feel like our voices are heard and that we matter, especially uh, in this age of smartphones, AI and social media, right? So it's truly wonderful, I think, that the Making Waves Foundation has brought us all together for this important event. Um, of course, I'd like to thank the foundation for inviting me to be a part of this important and exciting discussion. Um, I really believe you guys are doing some incredible work for underserved students in the Bay Area, and it's truly an honor and it's special to be here to support all of you. Um, for those of you who don't know, my name is Stephanie, Stephanie Lin. I'm a news anchor with Cron4. Um, I would personally consider myself a millennial, but I love seeing the impact that Gen Z is already making on our communities, uh, whether it's in the realm of content creation or political activis activism or just um, making great inroads on your perspective fields. It's really inspiring to see. And so today we're gonna hear from three Making Waves College and Career Success Program grads. We have Richard, Adeline, and Ashley, and they're gonna share a bit about their experience building community and connection while they were in school and in their jobs as well. So um, of course, I do have a few questions for our panelists uh, and then we're gonna open it up to our audience. Um, and for those of you who are tuning in, I see about 30 of you right now. I'm really excited to have you all here. Please do add your questions to the Q&A section and we'll try to get to those uh, with the time that we have. All right, great. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, so first question, Richard, Adeline, Ashley, you know, um, oh, actually, I should probably provide some context here. Richard, you're a San Diego State grad. Um, Adeline, you're a UC Berkeley grad. You recently graduated from college. And Ashley, you're currently at Sacramento State. You're a third-year college student. So given COVID and the proliferation of social media, the rise of AI, uh, what has building community meant to you and how have you gone about it? We can uh, start with uh, Richard Raps. Yeah, I'm happy to start. Thanks for the question, Stephanie, and, and good afternoon, everyone. Really appreciate everyone for joining. Um, again, Richard Amechi, I went to San Diego State University, class of 2020. Um, so I did graduate, you know, literally right in the middle of the pandemic. Uh, I like to say class of 2020 is like the forgotten class. You know, we didn't get a graduation ceremony. We didn't get a lot of those perks that, you know, you would expect a grad to get. Um, but nevertheless, amazing four-year experience throughout college. Um, I would say my experience building community has been quite interesting, both, you know, at my time in college and then post-college. You know, during my time at San Diego State, I was super involved on campus. I was a president of the African Student Union. I worked for the Office of Admissions. And so, you know, I was extremely active and involved on campus, which, you know, kind of transcended my career in leadership early on was just from my involvement throughout college. Um, and then I would say transitioning out of college, you know, graduating in the pandemic wasn't very easy, right? Not only from a job standpoint, but building a community, right? I started my career at, at Vanguard, uh, which was based out of Scottsdale, Arizona, right? So for me, being born and raised in San Francisco and then, you know, packing my bags in the middle of the pandemic, moving to Arizona, literally nothing was open. Um, it, it was a challenge. Now, a couple of things I, I I did to kind of bridge that that gap was, you know, social media was was huge, right? So I would say that that really helped out a lot during the pandemic, um, especially early on in the in my career was just, you know, being involved and staying connected with my friends online, whether that was through Instagram, social media, whatever. Like it, it was just a helpful experience to keep us all you know, connected, especially for, for those who graduated during that 2020 uh, timeframe. And so, yeah, I would say, you know, to answer your question, quite frankly, it, it means a lot to me. And, and, and honestly, just being involved with, you know, various, you know, organizations, both on and off campus in college was something that, that really, like, started that uh, community feel for me. 
Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's mm -hmm. move on to, let's get uh, Adeline's perspective on all this as well. Hi everyone, I'm a first generation college graduate from at UC Berkeley. I am from Richmond, California. I saw some people in the chat. Um, I would say that for me, it was a little different from Richard. I, in my freshman year was when COVID hit. So after that, I kind of felt like I lost a lot of my college experience years and coming back to school in person, I was a junior already, but still felt like I was a freshman um, struggling to make friends, um, hit having imposter syndrome, having to basically start all over. I felt like I could do this on my own. I can go to office hours. I'll be at every class, every discussion, but quickly realized I didn't have the time to. I needed to have friends in, in every class and quickly realized at least one friend in every class would help you along the way. <clears throat> and just building a community of people who are relate to me, have similar interests to me, that really helped me and succeed and continue to have motivation in school. Um, after COVID, everyone kind of was very isolated and felt like they didn't really want to interact. So having to put yourself out there too was like another thing that I had to really teach myself and grow from as well. It really is incredible hearing your both of your unique perspectives and really how you sort of work to overcome those challenges, especially given the times that, you know, all of us going through that pandemic period, it was really such a challenging moment for so many. And it really is admirable, I want to say, uh, for you guys to have shown so much courage uh, during such a, a really difficult period. Uh, I want to uh, also bring Ashley into the conversation. Um, tell us a little bit about how building community, what can building community has meant for you and how you've gone about it. Um, over the last several years? Yes, um, fortunate, I've been fortunate enough to not have to be in college during COVID. I was actually a sophomore in high school. So coming into college without COVID kind of felt like the same as high school in a way, except when I got to attend my upper division classes. I'm a political science major. So a lot of my classes, I'm surrounded around older white men so it's a little bit intimidating but I'm always able to find one person in the crowd who I relate to in those classes I also decided to join the club soccer team for a little bit more community so that has kind of helped me manage my friendships and then I do it on my free time so it's kind of like to ease my mind outside of the classroom Thank you so much for taking the time to, to share. Um, I want to go back to Adeline really uh, briefly here. Um, you mentioned that you graduated from my alma mater, UC Berkeley, go Bears, uh, with that degree in data science as well. Um, you mentioned COVID hitting the spring of your freshman year. That really changed your college experience. Can you kind of dive a little bit deeper um, in terms of how you really carved out a sense of belonging for yourself during that period of time? Yeah, so I guess I found community through my sorority, which is Lambda Theta Alpha Land Sorority Incorporated. We are a academic-based sorority. So right before COVID, I was recruited and joined. And then after we would join, um, just like have Zoom meetings and kind of do social events like that. And it really was like the light at the end of the tunnel for me because I really felt so isolated during COVID. I nobody like left home you know so I kind of had my friends through there and then once we were able to go back in person it felt like we've known each other forever even though we've never really met in real life um we it was kind of like the only way I had social interactions during COVID and even with school you know Zoom university was really hard to do and they kind of helped me like realize I wasn't alone and still feel like I had a sense of a college experience. Can you walk us through like specifically maybe the everyday gestures that happen in your sorority and other peers at school that were especially beneficial for you when it came to building community and maybe how, how you helped build a sense of community for others as well? Yeah, so we spent a lot of time um, studying together over Zoom, like just motivating each other, help helping each other through things 
we all kind of were experiencing the same kind of hardships through COVID and trying to do school at the same time. Um, a lot of us, you know, wanted to give up, but we knew that we had to keep going and we were there for each other. And we also had like a lot of social events where we would invite other non-Greek affiliated students and kind of help each other like get through this experience together. Um, and then afterwards, meet in person, finally talk about the all these things we went through together and it just made us that much closer. I'm so glad that you had that support system there and that you were also there to provide that support for others uh, during that time as well. Thank you so much. Um, Richard, you're currently an advisor with Fidelity. Uh, congratulations on your accomplishment there. Um, how can employers help build connection for Gen Z and folks of your generation? And what can employers learn from your personal experience? Yeah, I would say, you know, employers definitely can do a lot to support Gen Zers. I think it starts with just building a space for us, right? Hiring Gen Z, advocating for Gen Z, promoting Gen Z, right? Like we're a talented group, although, you know, we are Gen Z, so we're still pretty young. Um, we have incredible potential and opportunity. We all went to, you know, some really good schools. So, you know, our talent is is definitely up there. I would say just supporting us with some additional um, things outside of work has been really helpful. So, you know, being at Fidelity, I, I recently, you know, had the opportunity to attend, you know, a conference at the Association for African-American Financial Advisors in DC. And so they put on a conference every single year um, just to connect, you know, black advisors across the country, across different firms. And that was something that my employer was able to sponsor, you know, my attendance um, just to get me involved with, you know, folks who are more senior and more tenured in my field. And so just investing into Gen Z, developing us, I find that to be an incredible uh, thing to take advantage of. So I'd encourage employers to absolutely take that front, but also from a personal standpoint as well, right? It's not all about business, right? We like to have fun as advisors too. Um, but, we, you know, we, we had a, a beach cleanup this weekend, right? Something as small as that right? Going up to Pacifica Beach, um, although it was a pretty clean beach, right? But just cleaning up where we could um, just to help out in the community, things like that um, are all a part of that community building process that, that frankly, I think Gen Z enjoys doing. And I want to follow up with this question here for you. I, I did a little bit of research and according to the American College of Financial Services, Black Americans are underrepresented in financial services, just 5% of financial professionals. It's pretty incredible. So what systematically do you think needs to change here? And do you have any advice for those who are hoping to break into the industry? Yeah, I think, you know, there's a lot of reasons for, you know, a mis uh, an underrepresentation of African Americans in my industry. I think, you know, a lot of it comes down to just the, the sense of belonging, like, hey, you can be in this space to begin with, right? Um, and then another one is, you know, there's a lot of exams that need to be passed, right? And, and I've been on the hiring side, I've been in leadership and fortunate enough to be able to see, you know, some of the decision making around like, you know, who gets in the door to these types of fields and positions for entry level roles, like straight out of college. And there's just a lot of, uh, you know, different tests that go into place um, just for you to become a licensed advisor. And so I think just supporting from a resource standpoint, I think it starts in college. I think it starts in college. You know, I was pretty fortunate. I went to a, a pretty good school that gave me a strong foundation for, you know, the, the education I needed to, to break into my field. Um, but investing in students early on to be prepared for some of these tests if they're looking to break into wealth management, uh, the resources support would be helpful. Um, but also hiring folks, right, from for all the recruiters, like, hey, take a chance on on someone like me, take a chance on, you know, someone who could use an opportunity who's interested, right? That's how I got in, right? It wasn't because, you know, I, I was like a 4.0 student or anything like that. It was because a company took a chance on me and, and you know, I ended up running with it. So I think it really starts there. But ultimately, uh, we're going to have to take a chance on on black talent in order to make a difference, right? Like you mentioned, 5% in the field, it's even lower in, in terms of, you know, producing advisors. And so that's something that, you know, I take great pride in, but also wanting to keep that door open for, you know, folks who are trying to break in as well. 
And I really do want to applaud you, Richard, as well, for overcoming, I'm sure, your fair share of challenges and hurdles to get to the where you are. Um, and I, I, I truly have this belief, and we, we say it in the media business as well, because Asian Americans are also underrepresented in the media space and in certain industries as well. So if you can see it, then you can be it, right? So by you achieving what you have achieved, and this goes to all of you, um, you are trailblazers and role models in that way. So I just want to put that out there for all of you. It's something to be proud of. Um, so turning to Ashley now, uh, you are a member of the women's club soccer team at Sacramento State. Uh, how has being a part of that group helped you find a sense of community and how have you given back as a result? Yes, so I played soccer almost my whole entire life. So I was like, this is something I'm good at and I'm a really, I'm a very social person. So I just thought, you know, I'll just throw myself out there, try out for the team. It's an amazing group of girls. Since my freshman year, I felt very welcome to the community and just the community in Sac State in general. Um, and then I decided to become their social media manager as a way to like give back to the team for the great experience. Right now, I'm still their social media manager. I've gotten us a few sponsorships with Red Bull. So it's just a really great experience and a great community to be around. That is incredible, landing a sponsorship with Red Bull. Congratulations. Not easy to do, um, but I'm sure that's something that you could absolutely apply to whatever you end up doing post-grad as well. Uh, what, a, what a great accomplishment there. Um, so I know um, we are starting to take some questions now from the audience. Uh, we certainly invite everyone to uh, start to chip in their questions if they've got any. We've got about, yeah, we've got a good a number of people on the on the stream right now. So definitely invite everyone to participate. Uh, but I do see a couple of questions here. Um, so we could start with addressing those. So uh, the, the first one we have here is how has the Making Waves program supported you in overcoming barriers to higher education or in your current job? So um, perhaps Ashley, we could start with you. Um, so I basically get to attend college for free thanks to Making Waves. And in a sense, I do feel the privilege in the financial aspect of being in college for free. I don't believe I would have the mental relief and be able to focus on school if I had, you know, to be stressing about paying my fees or any of that. So. How about for you, Adeline? Yeah, apart from the scholarship, which has helped me immensely, I also really, really um, appreciated the mentorship that I received from Making Waves from Ms. Tripp and from Ashley Austin. They really helped me and motivated me meeting with them once a month really reminded me of not only my growth but how far I have come through four years of college um they reminded me to keep going and to also start ahead of time on my um like studying and exams just keeping track of my academic life and then also tuning into my personal needs my mental health needs and reminding me that I am human I need I need a break and that making waves will always be there for me Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, Richard, how about for you? How has the Making Waves program supported you? Yeah, it's been tremendous support both in college and outside of college. You know, I'll start with in college, you know, shout out to Christina Wright. She was my coach, you know, back in the day when I was at San Diego State University. Um, so just having a coach on your side who you check in with, you know, who keeps you straight and also, you know, when, when you have a bad semester, right? Like it's, it's, you're not always gonna, you know, have, you know, easy loads in terms of your academic uh, class work, you know, but, you know, having a coach to talk to who holds you accountable, I, I found that to be really helpful. Um, and she was also able to find creative ways to help me leverage my scholarship, right? Because of making waves, I was able to maximize, you know, the ability to study abroad during college where I was able to take spring break, you know, excursions to, you know, both Ghana and Ethiopia, right? And then my senior year, I spent my 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 first semester pre-COVID in Japan, right? Like this wouldn't have been able to, this would have been impossible without, you know, making waves at the time. Um, and so 
really appreciative of my coach, just finding creative ways to maximize my college experience um, through some of those international experiences. And then post-college, right? Like just being here today, like staying connected with the organization, being able to share some some insights into my industry and, and hopefully able to touch someone who is curious about, you know, what it's like to work in wealth management or breaking into, you know, the, the space. Like this is all things I would be, I would love to do. And, and so you know, just being um, invited back to spaces like this is all, you know, ways that making ways continues to pour into me. So super appreciative. It really sounds like the organization has done an incredible job and continues to do a great job at building that sense of community and fostering a sense of belonging uh, for our young people in the Bay Area. It's, 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 it's such a powerful and important thing. Um, we do have a question for Adeline specifically. Uh, how have you kept connected with your sorority after graduation? What does that look like for you? Yeah, so since I'm from the Bay Area, I do try to keep in touch with my Berkeley sisters. Um, as well as sisters in the area, you know, that have events that they post on Instagram, um, huge events, public events that I always try to be a part of, even um, the smaller chapter events that need more numbers. I try to make sure that I'm active and help them out as much as I can, because I remember being an undergrad and needing alumni support, and I want to do the same. Fantastic. Thank you for sharing that. Um, we have another question here for the group. How do you balance in-person community building in real life, right, and online interactions? Uh, we'll start with Ashley. We'll go back to we'll go, go back to you. Uh, I would say I have a pretty good balance between both. Um, the community at Sac State is already really welcoming, especially with like the soccer team, and then online interactions. Um, I don't really have to do a lot of online stuff other than like answering DMs that we get on our social media. Since I w I'm in college without COVID or without any pandemic, you know, interfering in the way. And Richard, how about for you? How do you balance that in-person community building versus online interactions? Yeah, it's it's been a work in progress for me. Um, I'm actually um, proud to announce I've been on an Instagram hiatus for almost a year now. Um, so I've tried to be a lot more intentional with my my time and also the relationships that I built. Um, you know, I, I I I try to tell people all the time, like just because you follow someone online, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that you really know what's going on in their lives. And so, you know, it's always important to check in on people, maintain those relationships, just like you go to work. It takes a lot of effort uh, to maintain relationships as well. Um, so, you know, my process has really just been just trying to find commonalities, right? Like I'm a young professional, so I like to put myself in environments where, you know, I can find common themes with the people I'm spending time with, whether that's, hey, we're, we're both early on in our careers or we have common interests, like let's grab a coffee, let's you know, go to a chamber of commerce event, a networking event, things like that, just to kind of stay involved, but also to build more organic relationships. It's very different, I would say, from being in college where you can just walk down the, the student life and leadership center and you just find friends. But like as an adult, um, especially when you're working like a lot of hours, um, it's not 40 hours a week as an advisor for anyone who wants to get into my field. Uh, but definitely just trying to spend more time being intentional with those relationships has been like my my focus right now Stephanie yeah absolutely intentionality especially as we kind of progress into the workforce and those uh, community building opportunities and those well it's just not as sort of in front of us necessarily we kind of have to go from scratch in that way I uh, I, I do relate and I appreciate that that you did bring that up and um, and it is interesting that social media and online community building, I mean, um, when we talk about that, I mean, social media has really done such a, it has been a, a wonderful service in so many ways because it's allowed us to keep in touch with our friends. Uh, but at the same time, there is always the importance of practicing that self-awareness and recognizing, okay, am I scrolling because I really want to know how so-and-so is doing or am I kind of getting bored and kind of get into that, you know, kind of a space where I don't want to be in. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you, you bring that up. Um, 
Adeline, how about how about for you? How do you balance? How do you make that balance between uh, that community building in person versus online? Yeah, I really relate to what Richard was saying. Like post grad, it's been really hard to like keep up with friends, um, making sure everybody's like good. Like trying to message my friends, how are you? How's your job been? Should we let's have dinner next month? Like trying to schedule ahead of time too, because everyone is so busy now. Everyone has their own lives. Just trying to keep connected in that way. And then also I am like super active on social media. So that's how I like to like keep my friends like kind of in touch and updated with me. And I like to see it both ways too. You know, the phone works both ways. That's what I like to tell my friends because it's really important to, you know, show appreciation, even if it's just through a simple text. Simple text, simple phone call can go a really long way for sure. Um, all right, so I think we have time for one last question for all of you. Uh, so for folks like yourselves, for Gen Zers like yourselves, uh, what advice would you offer about building and finding community? Uh, Ashley, we could start with you. I would say being outgoing, even if you're afraid that nobody's going to, you know, want to be your friend. There's, or if you feel like there's not a spot in the, like at the table for you, eventually you will find you, your group of people, or you can build your own group of people. Yeah. And Richard? Yeah, I would, I would say two things really. Like the first one is, hey, you can build a relationship or community anywhere. Like I, for the life of me, never saw, you know, myself being from San Francisco, living in Scottsdale, Arizona. I was like, what the heck is in Arizona? Like, I, I, I didn't know. But then I moved there and it was great. Right. Built a lot of friends and, and, and genuine relationships. Right. So you can honestly build a community anywhere. You just have to be, uh, you know, intentional about that and also just try to find some commonalities. Right. Um, so that's the first thing I would say. The second thing is just reconnect with some of those people who you went to high school with reconnect with some of those people you went to college with right like you, you might not be doing the same things or have went to the same colleges or they're on the same you know path but you know those are all still relationships that you've formed over time and so just pouring into some of those people who I've been you know disconnected with from high school you know that's been you know a big thing for me since I've moved back to San Francisco um, and, and it's just amazing to see how far everybody has come since, you know, the time we we're on the track team together or playing basketball together. Right. So, you know, that's something that I've, I've, I've taken, um, time on recently, which I've enjoyed. Yeah, I agree with a lot of those points there. I just had my 20 year high school reunion recently, and it was just really nice to connect with people. And then we started setting up times to, you know, reconnect after the reunion and you just never know. Um, sort of what conversations can kind of spark, what new ideas can spark when you just randomly maybe take a chance and like, okay, I'll go to that reunion or yeah, I'll text that old friend that I haven't seen for maybe five or 10 years. And oh yeah, I know they moved overseas, but you know, maybe they could be up to something interesting and you never know what could come out of that. Um, Adeline, how about for you? Yeah, I think community can look different for everyone. Sometimes you just need like one solid friend that, you know, will support you and be there for you through everything and keeping in mind, like who makes you feel good, who gives you peace of mind, feeling like each other's energy. It's really important. Um, You know, you want to be around people who will uplift you and are ha also have goals and motivate you and will just be there for a long term, like even after college, after you leave that job, whatever it is, those are the kind of people that you should surround yourself with. Thank you so much, Alan. And I completely agree with what you're saying, surrounding us with, surrounding ourselves with people who truly want to champion our success and who really want to root for us. And we would do the same for them, right? And surrounding ourselves with that positive energy. It's, um, it's such a, it's a powerful thing. Um, all right. So I think this does conclude our, our webinar here. I, I just want to thank all of you for again for your time and your wonderful insights. 
Um, it's been incredible to hear from you all. A huge thank you to Richard, Adeline, and Ashley for joining us today. If we were all here in person, I'd be like, round of applause, because you all did a fantastic job. Thank you for sharing those insights. And also thank you to all of the folks who are uh, who tuned in, who, who uh, stay, stayed around to the end for the stream. Uh, and of course, big shout out to the Making Waves Education Foundation for continuing to make a difference for so many young people in the Bay Area. You're doing important work and really appreciate uh, everything that you're doing. Um, all right, and uh, the organizers would like uh, me to let you all know that Making Waves is hosting more student panels this year. So do keep an eye on your inbox for their newsletter. You can learn more about opportunities like these. And um, also there is a very short feedback survey, I believe that is in the chat. So please do share your thoughts about the webinar and what you'd like to hear more about in the future. Um, and so, yes, thank you so much to everybody. Uh, wishing all a wonderful week and um, much continued to su success to all of you. I, I truly am so impressed and uh, it's, it's just incredible to, to hear your story. So uh, thanks for having me be a part of this and, and wishing you all the best. Thank you, Stephanie. All right, thank you.